we have somehow failed you as adults. We have d- tried to protect you from pain and maybe try to protect you from discomfort. And mm-hmm. so we've done so much for you that then when when it comes up in your life, you think that something is wrong with you mm-hmm. or you think that something's wrong with the world. But it actually is just we had done such a good job of protecting you from feeling any of the discomfort of the mm-hmm. world that now mm-hmm. when you experience it, you're you're confused. And yeah. I think like the same thing with when I first learned about trophies that weren't first, second or third place. Right. Gold, yeah. silver, bronze. When people were like seventh place, eighth place. I'm like. What, what is this? And they were like, oh, we just don't want any kids to feel left out. And I was like, and, and I, I, I got the logic of what the parents were trying to do. And I was like, but okay. And then you wonder what happens now when you see when kids, when they don't understand how that loss is. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't make, I didn't place. The yeah. Olymp- it seemed like the Olympics. I didn't place. I'm, I'm in the third place. I'm past third place. I don't get a medal. That's just kind of how it is. And I don't, I don't need to feel bad about myself. I just need to say, okay, I got to work a little harder. And I think when we have, when we do, when we did all that stuff, when adults tried to protect kids from the pain that they experienced, some of those pains we we don't want them to experience. Mm -hmm. But some of the pains are just natural parts of life that we have to figure out how to help them have a healthy relationship with challenge and struggle and the natural things that life brings us. Yes, I want kids to struggle. I do. I don't want them to suffer. And I think going out into the world and having to deal with things and feeling deeply unequipped and feeling deeply not like capable of doing these things, that leads to personal suffering Mm. versus struggling, which is going through hard things. I think what we, what we've lost is the ability to do hard things. That's something I struggle with all the time. I mean, I literally broke my laptop just trying to write a description for a course I wanted to do. And I literally, that was, that was struggling. But because I, because of the mindset that I had around it, it turned into suffering where I'm like, what's wrong with me, blah, blah, blah. But in reality, I didn't get pushed a lot as a kid. I, I had unconditional love, but I never had an adult be like lay firm consequences for me. And so then as an adult, when consequences happened, I was not ready for them. I didn't understand it. That's a huge thing. I wish that I could be like so savvy right now and be like, well, let me research, let me cite this research, but I just learned about this and I don't know the name. So I'm so sorry. I'm reading this book called do hard things. Mm. And, uh, I, they were talking about where this whole self-esteem, the participation trophies thing came from, because for mm. a lot of people, they just assumed that parents like the millennial parents or the parent, the generation above millennials kind of were like soft on their kids and stuff, but we pushed it as a government. In the early 90s, they put money into researching Mm self-esteem. And what happened was this main guy who pushed self-esteem, that's the answer, self-esteem. He did all this research and basically showed that there was correlation between like like, accomplishment and self-esteem, which is like we want people to feel accomplished even if they didn't make it, which is where this whole participation Mm -hmm. thing came from. But basically what happened was his report, that was like a small excerpt in his report. The rest of the report was like, there's no strong correlation. And what it actually found is that self-esteem is not built through accomplishments. It's way more built through time and practice and effort, through Mm -hmm. making mistakes, through going out there and and actually trying something. And whatever result you get, the result is not what really builds the self-esteem. The result is the process. Mm -hmm. The result is the process. And it's so interesting because we were talking about video games last time, but I think all of those things exist in video games when you think about how you level up how your skills get better like when you think about self-determination video games is one of the most interesting things to look at because Mm. you see those things you get that immediate feedback you build your confidence i know for me it's the same thing um i just did my first solo Fortnite run because the kids were like yelling at me they were like you got to do it just do it by yourself and it was the best i did but then afterwards they were like you're so good you're so good and i said I don't even think that it's good. I'm just happy I tried it. Mm. I'm just happy that I went in there and tried it because now I have I have proof that I can do it. Yeah. And I don't care that I was like placed 20 out of 100, right? I just care <laughs> that I went in there and I put the effort in. And so even for myself as an adult, 
trying to build self-determination is like it cannot be based on the accomplishments and the awards. It ca- it cannot be based on other people being like, you are worthy enough. I don't need yeah. people to tell me that I'm good and perfect. I need to get out there and do the hard work. I need to go out there and make mistakes and fail and try and learn from these things because that's what really builds self-determination. Yeah. I, I, no, I just talked a lot, but I want to bring this up. Yeah. Do you know Miyazaki? Say more. No, it sounds familiar, but I don't have an <laughs> intimate knowledge. Miyazaki um, makes animated films. Okay. Um, and some of the most popular animated like anime films that w- was became westernized. So they would bring these movies from Japan to America. So like Spirited Away, okay. um, My Neighbor Totoro, um, Howl's Moving Castle. It, it's some of the best art out there, but I love Miyazaki movies for a very specific reason. And I didn't really understand it until I got deeper into my work. And most of Miyazaki's films, some are about adults, but most of his films are about kids. And these kids get put in these really tough situations mm. and they have to figure it out. None of his movies has the adult coming in and saving the day. It is always about the kids going through it. And he shows the struggle. Spirited Away is one of the, it's, I can't, Mm. (laughs) it's my favorite film of all time. But this little girl goes through so much and she has to like break down at times. She has to ask for help at times. She has to like really stand up for herself. Mm. But you just witness her building self-determination. And it's like my favorite scene from the movie is when her friend sits with her and she's just crying and she's just getting it out because it's exhausting. But then she gets up and she keeps going. And, and that's one of the things that I wanted to base my work around, which is like, I don't want to be the adult that comes in and fixes things for kids. Yeah. I want to be the adult that comes in and offers them tools so they can mm. try and figure these things out for themselves. And if it gets tough and if it's not working, they can come back and learn some more. But that's where the real growth happens. I don't care about their accomplishments. I care about their effort and I care about their attempts because that's what really helps people grow. Oh, that was a lot. No, no, that was fantastic. I am passionate about this, bro. Well, tell me, just uh, for the spelling cake take, because I, I, this is new to me. I'm going to look it up today. I'm going to try and watch it. I'm going to try and watch Spirited Spirit Away. Spirit Away. Mia, is it Miyazaki or Mia? Miyazaki. M I Y A Mia. I'm saying it. M Y M I Y A Z A K I. Okay, I, I was in a whole nother genre of letters. Okay, <laughs> Spirited Away is <laughs> Spirited Away is the best one. And again, he does have some movies that are not kid based, but for the most part, like most of his movies are kids. And yeah. there will be adults. That's what I like about it too, is that there will be adults that offer guidance. Yeah, there are adults who like are kind of rest stops for them. Yeah. There's a woman in the Spirited Away who literally just like helps her kind of take care of herself and reminds her like you need to eat mm. and you need to sleep and this is tough and keep going and she just keeps going but that adult doesn't hold her hand and walk her through it and i think like Mm. this mental health stuff the more and more that i'm going into these spaces where we're talking about youth mental health the less and less i'm seeing young people being centered in those conversations it is we know what's best and people are saying what's what's causing this and we don't want to ask kids because we don't trust that their experience is valid because they're a kid But instead of just sitting with them and saying, what is affecting this? What do you think is coming up for you? And I think that that is is frustrating because then it becomes the thing where we are trying to fix something where they have no power in it, right? And especially because schools will say, tell these kids to ask for help. They're so stressed. And I'm like, babe, we're doing it to them. Like, Mm. you're like, I don't know where this comes from. And I'm like, it's this. (laughs) It's all of this. What do you mean? (laughs) And I imagine that even with that, because even – in the anime world, I'm I'm new to anime, and it, um, but people all for lots of years have said, "Oh, you should watch, you should watch Avatar: The Last Airbender." Right? They told me I should watch it. Students would say after they went to a workshop with the mask, they were like, "Oh, you should watch this." And I'm like, "I'll I'll get to it one day." And I remember when it finally came out into the 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 like the human series, um, I finally watched it. I know it's very different for some people, but it it was a powerful. Like story of a of a boy who had been given a responsibility that was bigger than he thought he could handle, and mm-hmm. his friends, other youth, were like, "We got you. We're going to support you. We see it in you. We know mm-hmm. there's something special about you. We're going to help you." And it's like what I've 
try to build whoever forward is that kind of space. So how do you help young people equip them with tools? Mm -hmm. I want them to know that they can trust themselves and they can make good decisions and that they have it in them, but they have to like work that muscle. And that mm -hmm. muscle requires them to like, okay, what, what, what are, what are my solutions? What are my, um, um, possible options here you know mm -hmm. when a young person is struggling and i had one just i talked to on the phone earlier today trying to uh, apply for this program trying to figure something out trying to figure out how do i get my transcript like he said oh they're not answering the phone i'm like okay well what are your other options you know in my mind i'm like what do you mean they're not answering the phone mm -hmm. <laughs> like you thought because you called once that that's mm -hmm. the way that now mm -hmm. i have to be careful don't go into teacher mode i have to go into quest curious mode mm -hmm. what else can you do <laughs> yeah you know say so what else can you do yeah. don't and, and not wanting to give the answer wanting to help him find the answer. it's in you mm 